Wellspring Church of All Nations presents Screams in the Desert, hosted by Pastors George and Sharon Stokes. Las Vegas couple bring the life-changing Word of God alive through anointed prophetic ministry. Their teaching causes mountain-moving faith to bring the victory of God's love to bear on the everyday issues of life. Join George and Sharon now as they share with you the secrets and joys of a fulfilling, abundant, spirit-filled, and spirit-led life. Hi. I'm Pastor George Stover. I'm so glad to be with you again as we talk about this vital subject of the development of disloyalty. And uh, we've worked through seven stages and now we're, uh, we're at stage eight, the development of disloyalty, uh, uh, stage eight. And uh, it's so important that we not allow ourselves to get to stage eight <laughs> or even to get to stage six or stage five or stage three or even stage two. If we can just stop and, and evaluate why we're doing what we're doing and uh, ask ourselves, am I being a servant? Am I being servant-hearted? Am I being uh, yielded? and obedient to the heavenly vision? Am I honoring those that God has placed over me? Uh, if we would just do a self-evaluation and be men and women of integrity, we'll never have to be concerned with these, this, develop, this developing uh, cancer within the body of Christ to where we will become disloyal. It, the one thing we don't want to do is develop disloyalty. Uh, as a person develops in, in, in uh, past the competitive spirit, uh, gathering supporters, uh, uh, the, the division is coming. Disloyalty is, is, is so strong by now, it's very hard to break. And uh, really, we should be aware enough of these stages that we don't get to here. We never hit this place. By the time a competitive spirit arises, we have dealt with that individual, and we've nipped it in the bud before he leads others off into error. And, uh, but here we are, and... and this one who is developing this spirit of disloyalty now begins to feed his group with the things that he has fed himself for so long. All of his complaints, all of his misgivings, all of those kinds of things. And he accuses those over him of being insensitive to the true spiritual authority, which is now, namely, himself. <laughs> and uh, mm, this is a horrible place to be when you think you're so spiritual that your leadership has is of no value and has no more no 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 spiritual value. I, I remember once we had a lady come into our church and and she was uh, prided herself on being an intercessor. And uh, I, was, I was fairly new in the ministry and naive, and we, we gave her the uh, morning prayer and intercession time. And she would come in. She got a, had a key to the facility. She'd come in. She had a group that she would pray with. And uh, then we heard that she was, uh, uh, by the Spirit of the Lord, she knew that the pastors had demon spirits and that we were this and we were that. I couldn't even believe it. Uh, she was so sweet to my face, she and her husband. But uh, so what I did, I took, I took a recorder that was voice actuated and I put it in a piano bench and uh, 
lo and behold, that was her, that was her altar. And I heard every word, recorded every word. Well, we had a little meeting after that and uh, it didn't go real well because she did not want to admit, number one, admit to what she'd been doing. And when we played the tape, then she was madder than a hornet. We had recorded her. And uh, anyway, she finally left the church, which is the best thing that ever happened to the church, actually. But it caused a lot of upheaval. And uh, uh, she uh, did. She accused us of being insensitive to uh, the true spiritual authority of God, which was her, of course. And uh, that's the way it works. And, and this person will gossip against the leadership in progressive degrees of severity because they're trying to build their own group, solidify a group that is against authority to build their own worth and their own value. Uh, I had a friend, an elder friend that was like that in, in the church, I, the first church I was in. And uh, I mean, he was so sure of how spiritual he was that uh, the pastor really couldn't tell him anything. And, and yet, to the pastor's face, he was just as compliant and nice. But then he'd go off and do whatever he wanted to do and talk about him. And uh, those kinds of things are, are so destructive and must never be found in our midst. Uh, this person will begin by speaking against those faults in the leaders that are obvious. And like I mentioned uh, on our last session, uh, we all have weaknesses. We all have areas where we're blind. We all have areas where uh, uh, we really, we need somebody else to come in and be the strong one in that area. Uh, we, every person can't be everything and do everything and be an expert in everything. And so it really takes developing a team. But uh, you, you, can, you can begin to harp on the faults of people and the weaknesses of people, and pretty soon you can't even see their strengths. And that's the kind of thing that, that, that this person will play upon, is obvious uh, uh, weaknesses uh, or faults uh, so, that, so that they can then validate their lies uh, as they move on into that. They then move into more obscure areas and those around him believe him because he was right about the other things. And that's the way the cults work. That's the way uh, the, the deceiver, Satan, uh, works. You know, he does know the Word of God. The devil knows the Word of God. His demons know the Word of God. They just twist it to their own uh, purpose and to accomplish their own goals. And unfortunately, people have learned how to do the same thing, uh, to twist the scripture to suit themselves and to twist situations. We must be careful this does not happen in our lives. It's deception, disloyalty, and division. They're all the offspring of rejection and godship, trying to put ourselves in the place of God because we feel rejected. And so we set up this, this barrier of having to be right, having to be the most spiritual, having to be the one with the answers, having to be the one that everybody looks to. Uh, and we're just the answer for everybody. That's Godship. And it, it feeds our need and we need to guard against that. God bless you. Brought to you by Wellspring Ministries and Pastors George and Sharon Stover. We count it as a privilege and an honor to bring you the life-changing Word of God. To contact Wellspring Ministries, write us at 8140 West Lone Mountain Road, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89129. Or give us a call at 702-631-5027. Our email is wecan at wellspringministries.com. Visit our website at www.wellspringministries.com. Streaming live 24 hours a day at www.streamsinthedesert.tv.